All right, well, welcome everyone uh, to another episode of uh, School for Profits, um, along with uh, Elijah 3.0. Um, we're happy to be here, and I think you guys will be excited. I think you guys will get, uh, I think you guys will appreciate the, the study that we're going to have this afternoon. Um, Recording before, in progress. But before, let's introduce everyone. I got my man right here in front of me. Cervantes Galan, how are you guys doing? Cervantes Galan, all right. And I got my man, Johnny C. Hey, how's it going, everybody? God bless you. And everybody knows the, right there, man, that man right there smiling from ear to ear. That's, <laughs> that's my man, Tiller. And What's obviously, up, I'm, the, I'm part of the E3.02, uh, El Pastor. And, and again, we're, we're happy to be here uh, with you guys. And uh, I think you guys will be blessed by the study today. Um, I think today's topic is one that's needful. It's one that needs to be shared. It's one that needs to be studied. It's one that needs to be embraced. It's one that whatever word you want to put there to, to make it more dramatic, it needs to be that. Um, I think that we are living in the last days. And I think that this message this evening um, fits the, the days in which we're living. Uh, but before we begin, we always want to ask God for his direction, for his leading, for the power of the Holy Spirit to be with us. And I'm going to ask my man, Cervantes Galan, if he can lead us out in prayer now before we begin. Sure. Uh, let's bow our heads. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day that you've given us, um, for this opportunity to come together through the amazing um, gift that is technology. We ask that uh, you'll be with us, send your Holy Spirit over us and guide our words, that we may be uh, edifying to all those who are tuning in and listening to this program. Be with our primary speaker, Pastor Sixto, and be with the E3.0 team as we uh, get ready to kick off this week of prayer for the School of Pro for Prophets, and just help us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I definitely want to start with the book of Joel, chapter 2, Joel, chapter 2, and we're going to look at a verse that everyone is familiar with, everyone that's, that be belongs to a church or has any knowledge of, of the Bible, um, anywhere you go, any denomination, they always use these verses. And we're going to dive into them, and uh, we're going to see exactly what it's saying um, today. And it's the verse found in, in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Um, universally, we know this chapter to be a dual chapter. Um, in other words, that it's, it's already happened, and we understand that it will happen again. Let me read that, verse 28 for you. And it shall come to pass afterward, and keep that, mind, keep that word in your mind afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars and smoke. And so everybody, I think all Christians are waiting for the day where we receive that outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a, in a full measure. Miracles will be done. Visions will be seen, right? But I think a responsible study of the book of Joel um, shows us that that this what happens in verse 28 and 29 and 30 is the end result of a process or, or something that the Lord was working with through Israel. Things had to be done first before you receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? And those were the, some of the things that we want to look at. A lot of people want the Holy Spirit. I don't see, I don't understand, I don't know anyone that doesn't want the whole outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? Anyone Amen. that knows Jesus, anyone that has a relation or wants a relationship with Christ wants the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And that's that's a no given. The problem that I see today amongst many Christians and amongst many churches is that they, they don't want to go through the process as it's outlined in Joel chapter one and Joel chapter two before verses 28. And I see that as a problem because as we're going to study in just a little bit, Israel almost forfeited the blessing of salvation. And if this is a dual applicated book, if this is a dual applicated prophecy, could it be that some of us here, or maybe those of you watching, could it be that some of us are in danger of committing the same sin that Israel was committing to the point that we too can forfeit the blessing of God and the salvation that he offers? And so this is what we're going to dive in today. I know that we're going to talk about some heavy topics. We're going to look at some verses you've probably never seen before. We're going to have th these verses you probably never thought about. So please keep um, your heart open. Uh, pray that the Holy Spirit uh, be with us, be with you and and let's be blessed together you guys ready i'm ready i i'm not a i'm not a expert on this i'm a novice but i'm excited about the study I, i've looked at it i've studied it before and and i'm really excited to share so let's go to joel chapter one and i'm gonna ask my man johnny 
Johnny C., Pastor Johnny C., to read verses 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. Let's get into the, the history of what's going on right here in Joel chapter 1. All right, so we got uh, Joel chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of uh, Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. So here we see that something is going on, right? And Joel is, is, is telling the people, the Lord told Joel to tell the people, right? Hey, this, that was going on. You haven't seen it before. But you're seeing it now. And I need you to tell your children and their children to tell their children, their children to tell their children and generations from on. And so this is what we're going to see what's going on. Johnny, read for me verse six. Verse six says, for a nation has come up upon my land strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he hath the cheek, the, the cheek teeth of a great lion. So here we see in verse six that there's a nation that's come upon the land strong and without number. Verse four says that which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. So the nation that came, it was a, it was a, it was an infestation of, a, of, 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 of insects, right? A pestilence of the palmer worm and the locust. And it was a, it was a nation. It was so many locusts that were, that came to attack um, Israel, right? The children of Israel and their crops. Well, what is the damage? Anyone that knows anything about insect infestation, right, or farmers, that's one of the things that they hate the most. Why? They devastate all the crops. They devastate all the crops. And you see here, our, uh, Cervantes Galan, read uh, verse 10 for me. Okay, Joel 1, 10 says, The field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languishes. Verse 17, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, 17 to 20. Mm -hmm. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry. For the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee. For the rivers of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. So you're understanding what's happening here, right, inside the city. There is an infestation of uh, a pestilence of locusts, of, of, of caterpillars, of just bugs eating all the crops. Verse 17, that the seed is rotten. When the seed is rotten, um, what are you going to plant for the next season? What are you going to plant for the next year? You don't have anything, right? Yeah. It's rotten. It's gone. Yeah, they they the, depended on that seed. They depended on that seed. Uh, how the beast grown, right? There's fires. Um, the beast, of the, the beast of the field also cry unto thee for the rivers of the waters are dried up. So here we see that, that there's no, there's no seed for the future. There's no food right now. Their fires are devastating everything that's around. There's no water, right? What, what does that leave with in the city? What does that leave in the city? When everything is destroyed. When everything is destroyed. Desolation. That's desolation, right? And so here we see the children of Israel in a, in a bad way. Here, these, there's no hope for the future. There's no food. There's no water. Everything's dying. Not just the beast, but the trees, the, the flowers, the, the, fl the fruits. Everything is, is the vine, right? The grapes. Um, everything's being dried. Everything's being destroyed. So if they stay in the city, they're starvation. If they stay in the city, they're die of thirst. There's nothing to eat, right? And so, but in chapter 2, and we don't have to look too deeply into chapter two, just a couple of verses. If you look into chapter two, if this wasn't enough in chapter two says the Lord says that he's sending an army, right? He's allowing an army to come. Look at verse two, a day of darkness and a gloomness, a day of clouds and a thick darkness, a great people and a strong. There hath not ever been like, neither shall there be any more after it. Verse three, a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burneth. Verse four. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. In other words, we see that there's no hope. There's no future in the city. And if they walk out of the city, if they try to escape, what hope do they have? What future do they have? It seems like they don't have any, right? Mm -hmm. In the city, there's death. If they try to escape, there's death. And my question is, as I'm going through this, this, these verses, why? Right? These are still the same people that God drug out of Egypt, right? They're the same people that he did all those miracles with. He, 
the, the cloud by day, the fire by night, the water out of the rock, right? Saving them from snakes. These are the same people, same nation. And yet now it seems like the Lord has forfeited his blessing, his protection upon his people. And we need to know why. If this is a dual applicated book, like we believe it will, then we have to understand why this is happening because it could be that some of us are committing the very same mistakes, the very same sin. Are you with me? Amen. Mm-hmm. And so we need to know why God has forfeited or pulled back the protection from his people. And as I read through the whole book of Joel and I try to look for the answer, I try to look for that easy verse till they say, hey, this is what's going on. I couldn't find one until I came to chapter one, verse 12. OK, chapter one, verse 12. those that are following along, um, it's just not going to be me. This is just the intro. We're going to get into what the nitty gritty in just a little bit. Just bear with us just for a couple seconds. Joel chapter one, verse 12, it says the vine is dried up and the fig tree languishes, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered, right? So he's again, uh, giving us a picture of what's happening inside the city, but we want to know why. And here it is, because that word, because tells us that it's about to show us, it's about to tell us why all these things are happening. It says, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Did you guys catch that? Mm -hmm. So why are all these things happening? Why has God forfeited or pulled back his protection hand or protected hand from Israel? And it says here, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Let's talk about that for a little bit. What does it mean? What do you think Joel is meaning here? What do you think God is trying to convey to us? What do you think the Lord is trying to say or want us to meditate upon today? What is that joy that they lost? Well, for me, um, when I was studying this, we all know that joy uh, only comes from one source, right? And if we go to Romans 5, starting from verse uh, 10, it says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. See, Amen. so to me, that joy that they lost, um, I, I don't know, you guys let me know, but that joy that they lost m- most likely was because they were no longer in connection with God or they were no, no longer in connection with the Savior. Right. Yeah, amen. Yeah. yeah. And it only makes sense because Galatians chapter five, right? The fruits of the spirit, you know, it's love, joy, peace, long suffering mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. It's only when we have that connection with Christ. It's only when we're connected to God that we can have true uh, love. We can have that true joy, right? Johnny C., you were going to say something? No, I was just, um, you know, just looking at the different versions. And I I think that's something that you're going to get into in just a second, because the different versions render that verse slightly different. Completely different. Um, I'll go ahead. Talk about it now. Talk about it now. I was just going to say that that message doesn't come through because everything that you said about the calamities and the desolation and everything that you mentioned there seems to be um, the cause of the the loss of joy. Mm. But that's not it, right? That's mm-hmm. that's not what's going on here, right, Pastor Sixo? No, it's it's not. And in and, and the verse twelve, and it's and, and you know it's interesting that you guys had. A, a segment just not too long ago about Bible versions and the importance of it and different things like that. And this is one of those instances and only in the King James version, where it says, uh, because joy is withered away from the sons of men, other versions will, will have it make it seem like, like they've lost their joy because all this is happening. Mm -hmm. King James version makes it, makes it known that, that because all this is happening is because they lost that joy. Right. And so it's interesting to note that even in the Spanish uh, versions, um, it's the same message. It's only through King James Version that we get that specific message. So, Ron, to Glenn? Yeah, no, I agree. That's that's interesting how in the different versions, it's uh, only in the King James. Yeah. That it that it uh, it gives that in that particular way, whereas in all the other ones, it's totally off. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I agree with every, what everyone said. I believe that Israel has always had a problem, right? The Lord would say, hey, don't follow idols. And it's like our kids today. I mean, Johnny C. and Tilla, yours is too little still. But it's like ours today. Hey, don't do that. Don't touch that. And what are they going to do, Johnny C.? They're going to do that. They're going to touch that. Right. And so 
Israel has always had a problem with identity. They've always had a crisis with this. They've always wanted for some reason, although God said, you are my special people, you are my special nation, a, a royal priesthood you are to me. And yet that wasn't enough, was it? Yeah. They always wanted to be like the other nations. Exactly. It was his peculiar people, but they lost their peculiarity because they were going after the ways of the heathens that were around them. Mm. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. Is do we see that today, even amongst our, I mean, when I say our church, let's say churches in period or amongst Christians. Do we see that these kind of things happening today? Well, worldliness entering the churches. Worldliness entering the churches. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, that's very common in today's churches. They, they're they trying to, they've uh, altered the gospel, where as opposed to being a biblical gospel, it's more of a worldly or social justice or secular type gospel. Mm. Sad to say. All right. Johnny C.? Yeah, we definitely see that. And when you look at this calamity, this desperate situation where you mentioned that even the seeds were going to be rotten or withered away, that had to do with their future. So it's like, um, how many of us are actually thinking about about the future, you know, mm -hmm. what the future holds? And, and um, this was a desperate time. But, you know, I just can't get over the fact that it wasn't the desperate times that took their joy away. It wasn't that. Mm -hmm. It was the desperate times was as a result of the fact that they gave up their joy. They lost Christ. their joy. Mm -hmm. They lost their connection with God. That's, that's the part that really hits home for me. Yeah. And, we, and you know, uh, Tilla, you were going to say something? I'm sorry, sir. No, yeah, I, I, um, I totally agree. I mean, there's so many, especially when we go to church, there's so many people in the pews, I'm not, I'm not talking about literally, but they're sleeping in the in the pews, you know, and they they're mm -hmm. people are on their phones and not paying attention and things like Sometimes that. Sometimes literally too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true, you know, and um, and and we, I see a problem in the church today where we are not cultivating truth, especially with the youth. You know, we're not cultivating the truth, and um, they're the ones that are going to be. Uh, that are going to be speaking out about this in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a big problem. Absolutely. It is. I mean, so that we're, we're experiencing a type of a spiritual pestilence and a spiritual drought and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and just look, you guys say, say it all. When, when all these things are happening in the church, the church loses its identity. The, the church goes into a spiritual crisis an identity crisis. They don't know what they believe in. They don't know what to believe in anymore. They don't, know who they are they don't know what their purpose is yeah. and and this is a dangerous this is a dangerous place to be as as individuals as a home right where the priests of the homes the fathers and this is a dangerous place to be if you're a pastor or or any kind of leadership at church this is a dangerous place to be i mean just to be to call yourself christians but yet but yet there's no joy right there's christ isn't involved in the things that we do mm -hmm. i mean that's a that's very dangerous man Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a verse that I wanted to share with everybody. And this comes from Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And this is Jesus speaking to the people. And this is what kind of resonated with me when we're considering that the people lost their joy, you know, and it says, um, take heed and beware of covetousness mm. for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Mm. So, that that's the christian lifestyle so you look at you you apply that to the people there in joel chapters one and two and it's seen that um you know that their 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 joy their their disconnect from god is what caused their um you know what is what caused the pestilence which what would cause the desolation mm. and so it's like they have to learn how to maintain that connection with god because the thing is, is that one, it, it doesn't matter what we go through, because we're going to have joy in our heart, no matter what's going on around us, no matter what the desolation is. But they were experiencing that, that loss of their, their identity, they were losing that, that loss of their connection with God. And that's what caused all these calamities to come upon them. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, it's all I was talking with Tilla just the other day. And talking about the, 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 the chapter one talks about how the, the trees were withered away, right? And in the Bible, we're, cons we're, we're, symbolized, we're symbolized as trees too some, in some places. Mm -hmm. And these trees were withered, right? 
the, the people, God's people were withered away. We can say because they've lost their connection with Christ. And that's what happens, man. That's what happens to churches. Um, they, they disconnect from God and they just go through the motions, but there's no joy in service. There's no, there's not, there's not an excitement there. You know what I'm saying? There's not a, like a umph there to keep working and they want to save souls. And they're content just going to church, coming down, sitting down. Don't ask me to pray. Don't ask me to say <laughs> nothing. Don't ask me to share. I'm just here to hear the sermon. Right. Um, and that's another topic. They, people always want to think that the sermon is the most important part of the Sabbath day. And, and, and we, I have other thoughts on that, but, but, but they have no joy in it. They just go through the motions. I, I came to church. I did my part. I'll see you guys next week. And, and they're disconnected. Isn't that what's referred to as like a Laodicean connect uh, condition in Revelation chapter three, mm. uh, where you, well, yeah, we'll go there. Give me a second. Revelation chapter three. Revelation chapter three, where it says, if you, if anybody gets it before I do. You're talking about the Laod Laodicean church? The Laodicean mm -hmm. church, yeah. Chapter three, starting from verse 14. Mm-hmm. All right. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God, and all thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I was that thou wert cold or hot, so that because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Mm. So, you know, so. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, we're spiritually in a spiritual drought, you know, or a spiritual pestilence that's going right now. So, you know, what comes to mind is number one, Phil is really quiet today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and number two is that the world doesn't see joy in the same way Christians do. Mm. So, it, what I mean is this is that there's a, a, a carnal, fleshly joy, and then there is a divine type joy so maybe we could talk about that for a little bit absolutely what's the difference what's the difference between the two joys actually uh, johnny just john just real quick because i think a lot of people have joy confused with happiness right mm -hmm. so what's the difference between joy and happiness what's the difference you're asking me yes i'm asking you Oh, man, you put me on the spot real quick. Let me okay, well, I'm asking, my, my I'm, asking Tilla, I'm asking Tilla. I'm asking Tilla. I'm asking Tilla. Tilla's too quiet. Let's go, Tilla. Come on. The difference, the difference between joy and happiness. The joy and happiness. What's the difference? Um, I would have to ask. Uh, I would have to ask Cervantes Galan there. What's the difference between joy? And happiness? <laughs> <laughs> the <fuck here? laughs> well, in that case, I'm gonna have to take it right back to Pastor Sixto. Okay, and that no. <laughs> but listen. All the, right, I'm looking it up in the dictionary. Happiness, but listen, this, as you can look it up in the dictionary, but as I as I'm thinking, joy is a contentment, a, 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 a constant state of mind because in whom we trust and in whom we we have confidence in, right? Mm -hmm. Happiness spiritual joy. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. But happiness is subjective right happiness comes you listen you give me a million dollars you better believe i'll be happy <laughs> but if they crash my car the same night and i lose everything i have and although i have a million dollars when i lose whatever i have yet that 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 happiness goes away right yeah now james says that we should count it all joy when we go through diverse things right mm -hmm. uh, and there's a difference when we go to that when we we should joy and happiness are not the same thing to me joy is is a state of mind knowing and trusting in my God that no matter what, I am not alone. He is with me. He Amen. has my back. He's by my side. Happiness comes and goes, right? Yeah. Happiness comes and goes. That's why in John 14, 27, if I'm not mistaken, Jesus says, listen, my peace I give you, not like the world gives. And he was making a distinction. The worldly peace is temporary, mm -hmm. just like the worldly joy is temporary. The Bible says that there's there's joy in sin, but it's only for a moment, right? You guys know that Hebrews chapter 11, it's only for a moment. And it's the same with joy, right? Uh, the real spiritual joy is continual. So that means if I go to the doctors tomorrow and say, six, so you have some kind of terminal disease. The Bible says that I can still continue to experience joy because of who I serve, Amen. right? Amen. And who I believe in. Amen. I might not, you know. And if that's the difference to me, go ahead, Johnny. 
No, I was just going to say, I, I was looking it up in the Greek. There's a verse that I wanted to read out as well. Hmm. Uh, and this is, comes from Jesus's prayer. When he, You remember when he was praying for the unity of his disciples, mm -hmm. and he's also by extension praying for us Christians. Mm -hmm. And then he says, this is John 17, verse 13. And now come I to thee in these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Mm. So Jesus is offering us his joy. Now, mm -hmm. this is what I literally just now uh, just looked at this. And I find this really interesting that the word for joy translated here comes from the word chara. And that is the same word that is that comes from from charity wow. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. from love mm -hmm. from love so what, love, yeah. what joy is related it's got to be related to love somehow so i read the definition it says joy delight um where to go i lost it gladness uh great happiness you know it's it's all these things combined but it, it looks like it's related to love somehow that reminds me of something that's interesting. That's interesting. Because if you go to Psalms 5, okay, if you go to Psalms 5 and verse 11, it says, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Talking about God, right? Let them mm -hmm. also that love thy name, right, that love thy name, be joyful in thee. Now, if you connect that with Revelation 2, starting from verse 1, now this is talking about the, the church of... Uh, I forgot what church this was, but it says, Unto the angel of Ephesus, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in, in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden, golden, golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou, thou canst not bear them with, um, which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and has found them liars, and has has borne, and has patience, and for uh, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. And then it says in verse four, nevertheless, I have somewhat uh, somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Mm. And so we have this this idea of of um, leaving, uh, you know, this this idea of of joy being connected to love or, or or rejoicing in 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 God, and then there's these these people that left their first love, and so mm -hmm. they are they are no longer joyful. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So could that could that could, there's a that's a powerful thought. So many of us that are in churches or many of us that want to follow God, could we could be a safely say that if we're not having the experience of joy and some kind of love towards god and fellow man then we're not having an experience at all can we say that mm -hmm. a spiritual oh, experience one that's yeah. drawing one that's edifying i mean i'm looking at the comments and this one comes from sifo theo it says joy is stronger less common feeling than happiness caused by spiritual experience caring mm -hmm. for one another or gratitude I mean, it's a great comment because joy Amen. is a, a permanence right of happiness it's a content with with life in general not just a fleeting moment of happiness it's an overall that you're happy with life overall it seems to me mm -hmm. and just I'm, I'm i'm just listening to till i'm reminded of the love chapter right first corinthians chapter 13 mm -hmm. and here it says though it says charity suffereth long and is kind charity envieth not charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up does not behave itself some seemingly um uh, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Mm. And so, you know, if if we're not being centered in truth as well, mm. as well as not having that love, right? What does the Bible say that the, the God's people will be destroyed because they did not love the truth? Mm -hmm. Right. And so, right. could it be that some of us are headed that way? You know, could it be that yes. some of our churches, some of our homes, some of just, just friends and family. Could it be that some of us are headed that way? You know what I mean? And that's yeah. why it's so important to, 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 to look at these verses in a very responsible way. Now, you wanted to look at something else, Johnny. See, what was it? I'm, I'm sorry. You well, wanted to see. Real quick, going with what you were saying mm -hmm. about, you know, balancing that joy, which is the love of God, or the one could even say it's the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Having that spirit of Christ, yeah. Christ likeness. Mm -hmm. And then where, as in John 4 23, where Jesus himself says, but the hour cometh and now is 
when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and, and truth. in truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Mm. So it's that, like you were saying, it's that balance of, yes, having that Christ-like love, charity for all humanity, you know, being completely selfless, you know, void of self. But but also being balanced with having that knowledge of God's perfect truth mm. at the same time. Amen. Yeah. So let's let's make a quick checklist, okay? Let's make a quick checklist of everything we've said, everything we've talked about, everything we shared for for us and for those on, on online as well. Yeah. So how can we know, according to everything that we've saw, talked about, how can we know Tilla? How can we know? Let's make a checklist if we've separated ourselves from Christ, the one that gives true joy. How can we know this? How can we know if we separated ourselves from Christ? Yeah, let's make a checklist of even. all the verses, of all the verses we used. There was a checklist. I, I, I didn't think about it right now, but there was a there was a checklist there of all the different. If you want to know if you're spiritually OK, we just shared tons of verses here that make you think, at least meditate upon what we've been talking about here tonight. I mean, one of them, I guess, I mean, the main thing would be if you don't have joy. Mm. Yeah. OK. Romans 5, Tilla brought up, you know, talking about the joy there. You brought up Galatians 5, that joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, um, Punky's uh, camera. Mm. Yeah. I'll have joy guys. when I see Sixto's face. In, in a couple of seconds. <laughs> I don't know if that's joy or happiness, bro. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I mean, it's just... Um, I just want to uh, speak personally for just a quick second as we're transitioning into this checklist is that, you know, when I was in the world, I thought I was happy, man. I, I thought I had it all. I thought I was content. And, and I just sensed this emptiness in my life that I, I couldn't explain it. And I tried to fill it with different things. And, you know, at some point, you know, the four of us are going to get together and we're going to share our, our testimonies together. And, yeah. um, but Man, I, I didn't experience joy until I started reading the Bible and and um, mm -hmm. and seeing that God cared for me personally. You know, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And and that made me he touched me in a way that I I I was trying to find fulfillment. I was trying to find joy, but it was fleeting. I, I couldn't find it no matter what I did. And so I remember the day I got baptized. I remember going to the church and going down into the waters. And I remember just not being able to contain my, my smile the moment I came out of the water. And, um, and ever since then, man, it's been uh, joy after joy after joy. There's been challenges, but the thing is, is that those challenges can't take those joys away. And the reason for that is real simple. And I want to just say this real quick. It's what John said. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the devil tries to compete, but there is no competition. God mm -hmm. is the only one who can give us that true joy. And so that's what the people did in Joel, man, that he, they, they basically walked away from the source of their joy. How could they have joy? Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think that's what that's the right. issue was. And I, and I like that thought, man. Jesus said also, um, he told us, hey, don't worry about it. I will become the world, right? As long as what was saying, as long as you're with me, right? John chapter 15, abide in me. As long as we're abiding in him, we don't have nothing to worry about. You know what I mean? Um, and so thank you for that thought, man. It's powerful. You know, I'm looking at the Joel, uh, the story of Joel and, and all its in all its fullness, man. And what more could God have done for them, man? What more could God have done um, that wasn't done already to make them see? To make them see, to make them understand how how he how much he loved them, how special they were to him. I mean, over and over he calls them like my sheep. That wasn't a, that wasn't a that wasn't a um, an insult. That was that was precious, man. Jesus is a shepherd. We're his sheep. He, you know, he calls us his, his royal priesthood. We're his children. We are the sons of God. I mean, what more could Jesus do for the children of Israel? Hmm. Yeah, he spared well, he no already... expense. Everything that, that could have been done for, for us, for his people, for all of humanity, he spared no expense. He mm -hmm. did everything possible. The only thing left is for you and I to cash the check, man. It, it, it's the only thing left is, is 
for you and I mm. to accept the free gift that he's giving us, the relationship that he wants to have with us. You know what I mean? Mm. Amen. Yeah, well, I mean, in, like, for example, in uh, Matthew 23, where he's talking about, O Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth mm. them which are sent unto thee. So he sent them prophets, you know, he sent them his messengers to help them to get, mm -hmm. get you know, to be right in his eyes. How often would I have gathered thy, uh, thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, right. and ye would not. Behold, because of that, what happened? Your house is left unto you desolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And, you know, he was talking about the, the disciples were looking towards the temple. But this body right here is called the temple too, right? Mm -hmm. And if we don't accept, like Johnny said, Johnny C says, we don't accept like cashing that check in, right? That was a good thought. If we don't check in that check, man, then our house could be left desolate as well. That's true. And so there, there's there's danger in this, man. Uh, taking God's word lightly, um, not taking, I mean, God has given us purpose. He's given us mission. He's given us identity. Uh, why does he do that? Why does he do that? If, the, if it's not to save us, right? If it's not to save us and, and for us to be instruments of salvation to others, mm -hmm. right? What do you guys think? I, I think Tilla <laughs> wanted to say something, but you could have cut them off or something. <laughs> no, I just... Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry if, if, if I did. I'm sorry. I can't tell. I, there's a delay and I'm trying to... Go ahead. I'm sorry, Tilla. Yeah, Tilla's getting you. mad, bro. I can see <laughs> No man, no, no. I, 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 I was just no, I, no, not really. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, no, but uh, I'm um, kidding, of course. I, I wanted to just, uh, <laughs> I wanted to uh, just, no. I wanted to just take some time um, because the question a while ago was how how do we know that the spirit of Christ is not in us? Right, that was the question. Mm -hmm. How do we know? Mm -hmm. um, well, well, how do we, how do we know that checklist? Yeah. Well, okay, so so. Remember what remember what the Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits, right? right. You shall know them by their mm. fruits. And what happened mm, in right. Joel? What, what happened in Joel here? In Joel, because the joy, because they have no joy, because they don't have the spirit of Jesus Christ, what happened in, what happened to the to the land? Fruitless. No mm. fruits, no crops. Mm -hmm. All crops are destroyed. It's desolate. And then remember also when Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ were, was at a um, what was it? He he was at the temple, and then he found out that all these things were happening in the temple, and then he left, and then he went onto the, uh, I think it was the Mount of Olives, right? He was in the Mount of Olives, and, and then he says, your house is left unto you desolate. Mm -hmm. And there are verses in the Bible where it says that, that the habitation of dragons are desolate places. Mm -hmm. And so we could be in danger if we don't have that joy, if, we don't, if we're not asking God to give us that Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Christ, that joy leaves us and then we we become desolate like us as a temple we become desolate and then what happens dragons can come in dragons can can come in spirit mm. of demons you know what i mean so yeah and, and you know also i'm, I'm johnny reminded me of Gal i used it i used it and i forgot about it but galatians chapter five it gives a a, a, a clear picture of two different worlds right those that live in the flesh without the spirit and those that live in the spirit in galatians chapter five um, verse 16 says, this I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm, now there's here, Jesus right giving the warning, live in the spirit and you won't fulfill it. Well, what, what's, what's the flesh? And verse 17 says, for the flesh lusted against spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. Um, it says now verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Now here's, here's the, here's the list that, that the Bible, um, gives us adultery, fornication, mm. uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so if you have any of this going on, um, then you know, hey, I'm in the wrong place. I don't want to be this. Because the very next verse, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. Right. Yeah. And so here it makes a, a, a clear distinction about you can tell, hey, do I have strife? Do I have seditions? Do I have fornication? Fornication can be physical, unfortunately, and spiritual fornication. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so here we see the difference between 
um, the flesh and the way the Lord wants us to walk in the spirit yeah. in the spirit. You're going to say something, sir? Well, or uh, Johnny? No, sir. Cervantes wanted to say something. No, no, go ahead, brother Johnny. I'll, I'll wait. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to fuse those two thoughts together that Attila was mentioning because something that, that you mentioned there, the, the fruits of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit is that when we are dependent uh, or we seek to fulfill the lust of the flesh, mm. that makes it impossible for us to withstand Satan from coming into us. We, we, we can't withstand him. And so we're either filled by the spirit of God by inviting him in, or we inadvertently invite Satan in mm. by, by, um, you know, by, by uh, partaking in the lust of the flesh. So mm. we think that we're making ourselves happy. We think that we're, we're, we're becoming joyful, but we're not, you know, we're just creating more and more problems for ourselves. Wow. Powerful thought, actually. Scary. Because, <laughs> you know, we can, we can easily, all of us here, man, all four of us here and, and those watching, we can easily fall into, into this, this, this trap, this trap eh? yeah. that Satan has for us. We're all susceptible man. to it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, I want us to go back to Joel chapter 2. As I was thinking, Joel chapter 2. Because I'm glad that the Lord... Um, does, or didn't, didn't tell Joel to stop right there, right? If he would have stopped right there, um, that would have been a miserable story, right? Yeah, the God's yeah. people, the one that he led out of Egypt, the one that he did all these miracles for, the one that he called his peculiar people, the one that he called his sheep and son, and I love you, and I love you, I love you, and then he just finally destroys them. Uh, and and, and it would, no one would have, I don't think I, don't think I would, no one would have the audacity to say, why did you do that, God? Because there's, you know, we understand that there are rebellious people. But we also understand that we have a loving, gracious father. Um, in Joel chapter 2, Jesus allow, God allows in Joel chapter 1 a couple of some things to happen to him, um, some calamity to fall, befall upon him to wake them up. Is that right? Can we safely say that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does Jesus sometimes use things to wake us up? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're sleeping, man. We, we're, we're, we're not connected. We're not, we don't, we're not connected to the joy giver. And, and sometimes we're sleeping. And here Israel, once again, has lost their way. They're sleeping. They, they're fornicated with other gods. You know how Israel did it all the time. And the Lord graciously, once again, gives them a way out of this disastrous situation. And so I, I'm, I'm thankful that Joel didn't stop in chapter one and, and the half of chapter two. But the rest of chapter two is, is filled with hope. It's filled with encouragement. Then that all is lost, right? Um, if you find yourself in this situation, if you find yourself not having that joy, if you find yourself not falling in love with Christ and, and not, falling, not having that love for his word or for your fellow man or for the church you go to or just for your community or, I don't know, for your wife or whatever, Jesus has given us the directions or instructions on the way out. And I want to read some of those for you. And we can talk about some of that, too. Joel chapter 2, we're going to be reading 5, 16, and 17. And 18, and Tilla, can you read that for us? Which one? Five? five? 15, I'm sorry, 15, 16, 17. And, uh, yeah, 15, 16, 17. 15, 16, 17. Okay, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? So here, what's, what, are, what are some of the instructions he gives, right? We see, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn, solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the others, gather the children and those that suck breast. Let the priest, the minister, Lord, weep between the porch. God here is saying, you know, you need to turn around, right? Call assembly fast if you have to. Um, call your mm -hmm. family together if you're, if, if you know, as a husband, like I'm a, I'm, I'm a husband of a beautiful wife and I have three beautiful children. If my home is not right, I'm the one that's supposed to call the solemn assembly. I'm Amen. supposed to call us together. I'm supposed to 
make things better by God's grace, right? But, but you know what? Don't miss this, bro. Mm -hmm. Is in verse 15, the first thing he says is blow the trumpet. You know why? You know why mm. they're blowing the trumpet? Mm -hmm. Because Tell they're us. calling an assembly. But you know what they're blowing the trumpet signifies? Is that they're blowing the trumpet to announce the coming of God. Mm. Amen. So God is the first one who they're assembling with here. Mm. 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 Powerful thought. Yeah. And look at verse 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, and this is the Lord speaking, and, and he speaks to, to you that are, that are looking into us too. Um, Turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Now notice this verse, verse 13. Here Jesus had to get a little, a little, a little, I don't want to say rough, but he had to be a little direct. And he says, and rend your heart and not your garments mm. and turn unto the Lord, your God, for he is gracious, merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. Here Jesus is saying, listen, I need you to do this. I need you to turn around with your whole heart and just don't look good on the outside. Right. Mm -hmm. Just don't look pretty on the outside. Just don't fake it. He said, I really need you to change. Right. There has to be a change in us if we really want to do a serious turnaround. Right. If we really want to have that relationship with Christ, there's no way that we can continue the same and follow God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. There has to be a change. There has to be a, a time of consecrating our souls, of fasting, of praying, getting rid of the sin that we have in our life, mm. right? Getting rid of that sin. And I think this is the problem with, with many people that I've uh, gotten to talk to in churches. They want the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know if you noticed that word, and it shall come to pass afterward. We're going to get into that just a little bit. After what? Well, obviously, it's after this. After you've given your heart to Christ, after you've turned around, after you've repented from your sin, after mm -hmm. you've gotten your solemn assembly together and you're proclaiming this to your family and your friends and, and you're getting yourself together. Then after this, after what? After consecrating oneself, then after it, I will pour out my Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. The problem that I see here is that a lot of people are asking and praying for the Holy Spirit but don't want to go through the process of humbling themselves and, and getting rid of their sin, getting their garbage out of the closet, getting their garbage out of their life, and really with all their hearts turning to Christ. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Well, Definitely. From what, you're, what you're saying is, I mean, you know, like you were mentioning, there's a lot of Christians that want to call themselves Christians, but want to hold on to the flesh. I'm thinking about in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. Where it says, in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat of our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name mm. to take away our reproach. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's powerful. A lot of Christianity today. I mean, I mean, I could probably be guilty of that at times as well. We where, can all be guilty. That's that's, where, that's you know, I it's like, no, God, I don't want to give that up. Why are you asking me to give that up? <laughs> let me let me hold on to this. But let me still be calling myself a Christian. You know, mm. so any one of us could fall guilty to this. Um, by the way, guys, we have 20 minutes until Q&A, Q&A time. Okay. okay. So I wanted to, uh, to share a quick thought. Um, when David repented, you remember when David committed adultery and had Uriah killed, mm -hmm. um, he wrote the 51st Psalm and I'll just read a part of it. It starts off by saying, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me, he says, right? So he's repenting. But I want you to see what he says in verse 10. I know you guys know this text, but check this out. I hadn't really thought about it in, in that context until we're studying this right now. But verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Mm. And then check this out. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of mm. thy salvation. Wow. Mm. It, it, mm. Isn't that so perfect to what, what, this, the, what, what, it, um, what the prophet Joel was sharing in, in his book? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Perfect, man. Perfect. And I, I just think it's such a, it's such a, a beautiful picture of Jesus as well, right? Of God's love towards us. Israel had not deserved his mercy. Israel had lost their way. Israel had forfeited the blessing, right? Mm -hmm. They were rebellious. They were an adulterous nation. And yet here we see who comes to who? 
who comes yeah. to who right it's god it's god it's god come looking for us mm -hmm. right undeserved unmerited he comes looking for us and you know what it, it's always it, it never fails to 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 excite me i don't know what word i want to use I, I'm, I'm getting excited now uh, but in, just to it never fails to to it to touch my heart how much god even though i am rebellious and even though maybe i am committing fornication or doing whatever it is and yet he comes looking for me in other words it, it tells you it tells it tells us about a god that's just as eager for us to be with him for all eternity he wants to save us he's looking for us he he, he you know <laughs> i don't know man I've heard people say he doesn't need us, right? Yeah. But he wants he us. Wants he desires us, us right? And, and to think that God would go to great lengths to save someone like you and I, or you and I, right? Or, or you and I. Um, that he would go to great lengths to save people like us Amen. Yeah. speaks volumes of his love if, if we be honest with ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah man. So I don't know, man. I, I love to study it. I love to to look at it. Well, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about that verse in Second uh, Corinthians seven, where fourteen. Uh, you know, I mean, everybody uses it. Some people use it out of context, but I think if you know, if we know that modern Israel today is the church, well, then you know, and that you know that chapter, like you say, it's a dual application in Joel one and two mm -hmm. and three. Well, you know, we see all these, you know, pestilences and, and, and uh, this turmoil and, and these calamities falling upon the people. But what does it say? If my people, which are called by my name, Christians, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, powerful. That was Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, sorry. Oh, you had me looking at St. Corinthians. I was like, wait a oh, minute, sorry, it doesn't go sorry. to 17. <laughs> yeah, no, just I just didn't want to embarrass you. Looking for it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Both start with a C. Both start with a C, a two and a C. <laughs> but you know, man, if, <laughs> if we can go back to, to Joel chapter two, I, I want to I want people to see. I want to see what I want you to know. I want you to understand what Christ can do in us. We've messed up, we've done wrong, we've been rebellious, All we've walked us. away from God. If that's your condition now. Listen, listen to what it says. After, after we've humbly turned ourselves around, we've asked God for forgiveness. Jesus saying, hey, take it serious. Verse 13, take it serious. I just don't need you to look good on the outside. I need you to be good on the inside, right? Um, then those reflect his character more. Uh, call us on. We've done that suddenly. We, we, we've consecrated ourselves. Notice verse 13, 19. I want you to see Jesus. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, this is after we've repented. Behold, I will send you corn and wine, mm. and oil, mm. and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Mm. But I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren. In other words, that's the army that was coming to destroy him, and desolate with his face toward the east, toward the sea, and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea. And his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath gone, done great things. Look at verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts mm -hmm. of the field. For the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Verse 24. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vast bats shall flow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years of the locust that thou hast eaten. Mm -hmm. And the canker and the caliper and the pommel and my great army which I have sent among you. And then Amen. I shall pour out my Holy Spirit upon you. In other words, as soon as we repent, Right? God says, now we can do something, mm. right? Now we can work with this. We've humbled ourselves. We've repented. And Jesus said, now I can work with you. Mm. Is that true? Yes or no? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And here it says that he'll, he'll restore them back to, it almost reminds me of Job, right? Job was doubly restored everything that he was lost. Mm. Uh, and, and, and this is the same thing. He goes here, you're, you're going to, you're going to, if you do this, if you humble yourselves, if you ask for forgiveness and you allow me to lead, and you will have that joy restored, right? Amen. And and you will be blessed. And every and here you'll see in every aspect of our life we're going to be blessed. Yeah, I think that's yeah. I think that's awesome, man. You know, I think that's awesome that all we you know after we repent, after we repent, um, because we lost that joy after we repent that it's God putting that joy back in us. 
is mm. God putting that joy back in us. And it reminds me of um, Isaiah 12, um, Isaiah 12, starting in verse 2. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the, wa- the wells of salvation. And so it's, that's God God giving us the salvation and restoring that joy ba- back in us. And mm, I think that's man. awesome, man. I think that's awesome. I Let me read this text from Isaiah 33, verses 15 and 16, talking about what happens when you repent? It says this, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hand from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. And check this out. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Mm. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Amen. So what is the joy there? What I mean, our bread, yeah, our bread is going to be sure. He's going to supply all of our needs. But what is the whole point? What is the, where do we get the joy from? That thine eyes shall see the king mm. in his beauty. That, and he's the source. He's the source of our joy. Mm. Amen. 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 And, you know, I just want to remind everyone, we're all sinners, right? We, we, we all need Jesus. And the beautiful thing is that, you know, I remember a pastor said, I, every time I sin, I want to make sure that this, I, I like, like he squints because I want to make sure it's still in there, right? First John chapter one, verse nine, is it still there? It's still there. And, and it's always going to be there. First John chapter one, uh, verse nine says, if we confess, um, if, why if, well, God doesn't force you. God calls us. God rules us. God looks for us, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't force us. But it says, if we confess our sins, if we turn away from our sins, that's exactly what he said in Joel chapter two. It says that he is faithful. In other words, he is going to complete. He is going to forgive you. And he's just, in other words, he can do it for everyone to forgive us our sins. And not only to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all the unrighteous. In other words, to, to that sin that you struggle with, that sin that I struggle with, we don't have to struggle with that forever. Right. Mm -hmm. We can repent. We can turn away from it. And God says that he gives us the power not to commit that sin again, to overcome it, to Amen. overcome that sin. Amen. But we have to let him work in our hearts. Right. right. And so it no matter what we've done, if you feel even tonight that you've, you know, I don't know, you know, we all, we all, we're all messed up. Fall we've short, all, we all, we fall all fall short, short of, of the glory of God. God. Amen. Yeah. This is the time to do it, man. Ask God for forgiveness. Uh, this is, this is the time God is coming soon. We believe it. Uh, we see it. We sense it. Even the people that are not even in walking in spiritual light. They know something. They happening. know something's yeah. happening. I was reading not too long ago. This, I don't want to deviate to this, but this there was a, I think it was Science Today. I think that was the magazine. And it was saying that scientists know that something is about to crack. Something is about to blow. It's going to be huge. They just can't put the finger on it. Yeah. Well, well even science has that, what's that called? The doomsday clock. Mm. And they have it, what, at 1159 or 58? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, even even the secular scientists know that this thing has to give. Mm-hmm. So if you sense the Lord working in your heart, the Holy Spirit pounding in your heart, now is the time. He says, "I'm faithful. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna forgive your sins. I could do it for everybody, and I'm gonna give you the power. I'm gonna cleanse you from that unrighteousness, from that sin. But we have to come to Him first, right? Mm. We have to come to Him. Amen. Amen. So what is um uh, Punky? If we can if we can have a conclusion, is that the the conclusion or what's the, how, how do we yeah, conclude? That's, that's it, man. I mean, the, the, we're, we're like, aren't it, it's doomsday, right? They call it doomsday. doomsday we know, <laughs> we know that, uh, that doomsday is coming, right? We know that the day of reckoning is coming. Um, and God doesn't want any of us to perish, right? He wants all of us to come to repentance and he wants to see us in heaven, right? I think it's in, it's in Zephaniah. Um, Arnie, if you can look that up, Zephaniah, I think it's 70. Ah, I forgot where it was. It was Zephaniah. There was a verse there that, that always struck me. I don't have it here, so forgive me. I'm just thinking about it. It just came to my mind where it says that when we get to heaven, you know, when we get to heaven, that when we see God, that verse says that God will sing to us. Mm-hmm. God will mm-hmm. sing t- to us, to me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm ugh, compared to, to, to God. Why would he sing to me? He's, he's, <laughs> he's just as eager to be with me as I am to be with him. 
Mm-hmm. And he's just as eager to do everything he can to save you and I um, at any cost. I mean, he demonstrated that on the cross. He, he gave his life so that you and I can, like, like, like Pastor Johnny C said a little bit ago, to cash in that check, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't do anything for it. We didn't deserve it. He says, but I gave it to you freely because I love you. And he yeah. wants to be with us in heaven forevermore. He wants to spend an eternity with you and with me. I don't know why. I can't explain why. But I'll tell you what, I'll take it. I want to cash that check in. <laughs> Amen. Zephaniah 317, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Beautiful thought, man. Mm-hmm. And that's for every single one of us, for you, for us here in the studios and, and, and Johnny C, uh, where he's at. I mean, that, that that singing i want to hear it mm. you know i want to hear mm. it and i want you guys to hear it too and amen. so that's all i got okay amen. amen any other last thoughts from from anybody before we take any questions uh, i was just thinking of that story of the the check and i heard it from uh billy graham once and i'll just summarize it he says that his son this guy's son uh asked him for some money for a car so i can't remember and so instead of giving him the money, he gave him a Bible. And he said, son, I want you to read this Bible. And he got so mad that he just <laughs> left the Bible. He left the house. And then years later, he didn't speak to his father for years. And then his father died. And he came home for the funeral. And his mom gave him the, or, the, or I don't know if he gave him the Bible or he found the Bible. I can't remember. But anyway, he grabs the Bible and he opens it. And it turns out that the dad had written him a check for the money that he asked for. It was just in the Bible. He just wanted him to open the Bible. Mm. And, and that whole time he forfeited the, the blessing that, um, you know, that the father had for him. And, and, it, and it makes you wonder how many times oh, your camera went out again. Um, it. it makes you wonder just... Uh, you know, how, how many of us are forfeiting the same blessing that God has freely offered to us? It's just my mm. Amen. Wow. Yeah. You, you know, it almost thinks to too, man. I always come across people that that we talked about forgiveness and we talked about first John 1 9 and, and how God wants and we Johnny, that po- that verse was powerful, man. But uh, and you always come across people saying, But man, you don't know what I've done. Mm-hmm. You don't know the, the life I've led, you don't know. Let me tell you something, man. I'll, I'll just real quickly. Your life is not a surprise for God, right? Mm-hmm. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, Romans 5, 8, that God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, he knew you were going to do that stuff. While you were just a sinner, he still died for you anyways in hope that you would turn around, right? Um, I, I'm always reminded when Judas came to give Jesus a kiss, right? He said, the one that I, the one that I give a kiss, that's the one you want. And, and Jesus' first words were, friend you betray the son of man with a kiss right and that shows us that jesus had already forgiven him so how can you and i be sure that we're forgiven truly forgiven even if we don't feel it right how and and we find that in zechariah chapter 13 verse 6 i I always like to share this verse when i can and one shall say unto him zechariah chapter 13 6 and one shall say unto him what are these wounds in thy hands right when you get to heaven who who did this to you jesus what's the scar on your side what are these holes on your hand Right. And then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Mm -hmm. So your brother, the Lord loves you. He has forgiven you. He wants to continue to forgive you. He wants to continue to have that relationship with you. Don't let Satan hinder. Don't let your feelings hinder you. Come to Christ now and and give him your heart. Give him a chance. Right. At least give him a chance. And just real quick, Tilla, I'm reminded of a story. There's a blind girl on top of a roof because the house was was burning. You know the story, right? Mm-hmm. And she somehow got out of the got out of the, the story and she was on the got out of her house. It was like a little balcony. And uh mm-hmm. and uh the, the girl was on top of the roof, but she was blind and she couldn't see. I don't know if she was blind or there was a lot of smoke. I don't remember the, the full the whole thing if she was blind or not. But but the but the but the the bomberos, the ambulance, the firemen were saying, jump, I see you, jump. And she goes, no, no, I don't see you. Then they were saying, jump, we see you, jump. 
and the house was in flames, it's about to collapse. And finally she hears her father's voice, sweetie, jump, I see you, right? Mm -hmm. And then she jumps into her father's arms, right? And you know what? You might not see Christ through your situation, through your sin, but he sees you. And he's telling you to jump, take a chance with him. Um, give him, give him, give him a chance. I mean, I don't know what, how else to say that there's, there's nowhere to go. You've done everything you could give Christ a chance. He's there. He sees you. He can help. He wants to help. Amen. Amen. All right. Can All right, we, uh... think, did we pass over? <laughs> no, we're good. We're, we're going to open up <laughs> to questions. We're going to open up to questions real quick. Um, I don't know if, uh, mm -hmm. hey, brother Brad, can we, can we get the questions rolling? Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Um, before we roll into, I just want to say uh, thank you, uh, Arnie, Punky, John, and Tilla. Powerful, powerful message. I, I pray that everybody in here, uh, they got fed some food tonight, some spiritual food. It was a very, very powerful message. One thing I want to share before we transition into the, uh, um, the question and answers is, um, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is, is John 6:44. It says, no man can come to me except the father which has set me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. Specifically where it says no man can come to the, the father unless unless he, he drew you to him. No, no person can come on to Christ unless the father drew you. So every single person that's in here. The father wanted you. John 3, the John 3, Amen. 16 says, God, so a lot of people don't pay attention to this verse. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God, the father, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. All right. Amen. So let's shift over to uh, Q&A questions. If anybody that's within the chat, there should be a raised hand symbol. And, and uh, you know, first person to raise a hand will unmute your mics and you can you can go ahead and ask your questions. So Q&A is now open. I think there's people um, you, should, you should show them where the press it at, uh, bro. Yeah. It's, it should be where it says, uh, it should be at your bottom right. If you're on a PC, it should be on your bottom right. If not, if you have a camera, <laughs> you could just raise your hand. Yeah, it should be in your reaction section. Exactly what Ali said. If not, if you just have your camera on and you just want to raise your hand, that that's fine too. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> the message was super clear, man. That's what it was. <laughs> okay, okay Ad, um... Addy. Oh, yeah. um... Go ahead, Ali. It's pronounced Ali, so. Uh, yeah, but um, I wanted to ask. Uh, it, it's fine. I wanted to ask. Um, I'm walking with God and Jesus daily, and I know this can be a lot of people's questions. Um, we see in the Word a lot. It says Jesus is saying, "Abide in me," and and having that branch effect, saying like, "Stay with me, stay connected," and that's our only way to survive in the end. Now, a lot of people say that, but. Uh, people that are new believers, um, some people ask me questions a lot. How, what should we tell people like that, that are new in the faith and they want to know how can I have a connection to with God and Jesus? What is the daily practices? What is the daily things that have an intimate, deep relationship with God and Jesus? Yeah, good question. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll just answer it briefly and you guys. In Matthew chapter 24, and Jesus, the disciples come to Jesus and they want to know what are the what are the what are the signs of the end times, right? That's what they want to know. What is what what is you know what's gonna happen at the end of time? And Jesus' first remark was, Take heed that no man deceive you. And so what I try to tell people 
you know, and even new believers, one of the one of the most practical things is to to have a constant. How can we take heed? How can we know the true from the false, unless we're we're studying, um, unless we're praying, unless we're searching the scriptures, right? Um, and that's one of the things that one of the practicality things is is is, <clears throat> is we got to teach people how to how to study their Bibles, right? Not just tell them to study their Bible, but to how to search the Bible. And one of the things I try to do is I try to take people under my wing. Um, if they've asked me those kind of questions and I and try to show them just different, different ways to study their Bible, have a, their own personal relationship with Jesus on a daily basis, have a personal prayer life with, and, and, and take time to share, right? Take time to share. Um, prioritizing. And prioritizing. Um, we had a small care group and we answered four questions every time we, it was a small care group. We had more visitors. I wish you guys were there. We had more visitors and the members. It was amazing. And we would answer four questions. We would take a passage of the scripture. We'd take a story from the Bible. We'd have to answer four questions. One, um, what do you learn about Christ's character? Two, what do you learn about you as a human? What do you learn about yourself? Three, um, if this is the word of God, if you believe this is the word of God, what do I have to do to align myself with what the word is teaching me? And four, who can I share it with? And these are the four things that these, these, these new friends of ours, they would leave out of our meetings and they, they had a newfound uh, view on Jesus, a new uh, respect for Christ. Um, they understood where they where they differ from Jesus and themselves. They understood that this was the word of God and they were trying to align their lives with it. But they also had a mission and their mission was to share what they were learning to other people. And so that's mm -hmm. that's what I try to do still, even when people ask me that. Hopefully that's helpful. I just wanted to say, too, and I think this is also very, very um important um in, in matthew 7 starting from verse 21 it says not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that worketh iniquity so he mm -hmm. says i never knew you I never knew you. So that word to know, that word to know, if you go to Genesis, if you go, I think it's Genesis 4, Genesis 5, um, you, can, you can see uh, in context, Adam knew his wife and then they bear children. Adam knew his wife. And so the word to know means to have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Sorry. And that's the only way that you can, uh, you can have, you know, you can, you can know Jesus Christ to have to, to have an intimate relationship with him. And we can't do that unless we're studying the word and we're going through, um, you know, we're studying the word and we're praying and um, to really to really desire to have an intimate relationship with him. You know, and, Amen. And, and to add on to that, I mean, it's through that intimacy. Well, you you well prior to that, you love him. You know, you're because of that love, you have that intimate relationship with him. And in John fourteen fifteen, he clearly says, "If you love me, keep my commandments." Mm -hmm. so, I, I also more than anything, it's also a um, a conviction in your heart that you want to get to know him. So, mm -hmm. for example, I'll read to you. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, because Ali asked a question, well, how does a new Christian, you know, come close to him? And this is what it says here. It says, and ye shall seek me and mm. find me mm. when ye shall search for me with oh, yeah. all of your heart. Mm -hmm. So the moment you seek God with all of your heart, he will protect you. He will guide you to the truth. There is nothing the devil can do to interfere with that. Nothing. Amen. As long as you are looking for him with all your heart. And this is one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible, verse 14. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Mm. Praise the Lord. So that, that's, Amen. that's just my answer to that. Amen. Psalms 23, two, 23, 1 is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. In other words, as long as the Lord is leading us, the Lord is guiding us, we shall not lack anything. That's and right. he leads us through his word. He leads us through prayer. He leads us, you know, and, and, and this is how we can connect. The, the Abi used uh, John 15 and it says, I, verse five, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, I mean, that had the intimate relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and I in him. In other words, you've opened your heart. Jesus is in there. You're allowing Jesus to work. The same bringeth forth much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. So everything we said is just in different verses. We're saying all the same thing. Yeah. Amen. 
All right, we have the next question from Sandra JL. I, I'm curious Hello? to know where the me? people are from. So Sandra, um, can you tell us where you're from? Hi, can mm -hmm. you hear me? Yeah, we yeah, hear you. Oh, awesome. I'm from Toronto. Toronto, right. welcome. Yes. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. So um, I know there's a lot of questions, so I'm going to make mine quick. And it's just uh, to get a, you know, just to get a quick um, thoughts from you guys. Um, one of our Hispanic uh, brothers at Elijah 3.0, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, mentioned a few moments ago um, that we are not here, you know, um, we're here on a purpose and we're not here by accident. So I'm wondering in, um, in the context of trying to regain your joy, is our joy not connected to our purpose? Um, I was watching a sermon not too long ago with an Adventist pastor, and he talked about um, how when you're feeling lost as a believer, that uh, it could be because you're not about God's business, mm -hmm. and you are not using your talents and your gifts um, that you're supposed to on this on, in this journey. So I'm wondering if that is what, not one of the elements to ensure that as you're connected and as you stay connected to God, then you should also be using those gifts and, um, and talents so that you do feel a sense of purpose when you get up in the morning. It's not just about you know, getting up and taking care of your spouse and your kids going to work and then doing the whole rigmarole that about 75% of us do every day, but you're not, we're not feeling fulfilled. And mm. it could be that we're just not following our purpose and being about God's business. I'm going to mute, I'm going to mute myself back up and let you guys discuss. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'll just say it real quickly. I mean, thank you, sister, for, for, for that. In Matthew 28, God gave us our commission, right? Matthew chapter 28, 18, 19, 20. And Jesus said, Jesus came and spoke unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Jesus expects us to share and to work, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's like a three, it's like a, it's like a triangle, right? Uh, we need, we need the Bible study. We need prayer. And one of the things that keeps us alive when that, that is, is our purpose. And our purpose is to share God's word. And, and if we're fulfilling this mission, if we're connecting to Jesus through prayer and Bible study, there's no way that, listen, if you study your Bible every day, the way we're supposed to, you will always have something to do for Jesus every day, mm -hmm. every day. And so Jesus doesn't expect us to learn all these truths and just grow fatter, fatter spiritually. He wants us to learn this truth and run with it and live it and share it. And in so doing, we are fulfilling our purpose and our mission that God himself has given us. So you're right on that. You're right on that. Yeah, you know, what came to mind is uh, Sandra asked the question was a sermon called Mission and Identity by uh, <laughs> David Pastor Asherick. David Asherick. Uh, Sandra, if you look that up, you'll see that this pastor um, talks about how mission, your mission gives you identity mm. and your identity you know, manifest itself in your mission. And so, um, and of course our, our mission is, as Christians is to be like Christ and we have mm -hmm. to have that mission in the spirit. So you're right on with, with that thought, Sandra. Thank you for that question. Hmm. Our next question is from Christy. Christy, where are you from, Christy? But they, you got to tell us where you're from. And if you could put your camera on, we'd like to see you. <laughs> Okay. Hey, how y'all doing? I am hey. from St. Louis, Missouri. Myself and my husband. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? <laughs> so my question is about listening to or for the Holy Spirit. Um, we both we both study daily, um, sometimes together, sometimes separate. I don't think that really matters, but how are you sure, may, maybe not so much coming out of the book itself, but you know, I don't know, you should go right when you maybe should be going left, but you know, there's something deep inside telling you make this turn, talk to this mm -hmm. person, go see this person, call whomever. How do you know that you're actually hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, part of it, I think is, when you know that a thought isn't originating from yourself, so then you, you can get the sense that, okay, so this isn't a thought that's, that I'm coming up with. So that, that's a, one of the biggest dangers that a lot of people do is that they, they don't realize that I'm, I'm just thinking this myself. God wants me to have this. God wants me to have that, mm -hmm. but that's not the case. So you'll know 
when a thought doesn't originate with yourself. That's one. The other thing is, is that depends on your connection with, with Christ. So if you're maintaining your connection with him, he's going to make sure that you're not deceived. He's not going to allow the devil to deceive you, but you have to maintain that connection. So what I'm saying is, is that we can't live a dual lifestyle and expect to have good directions. Uh, we can't live a life of sin or we can't keep, you know, li living um, as if we're Christians, but we're really not Christians. And then expect for the Holy Spirit's guidance to just, you know, to just be there because what we end up doing is we end up letting the devil in and he's the one that can whisper in our ears sometimes. And so to prevent that from happening, we have to maintain, like Jesus said, abide in me and I in you, and then you can be sure. And then not only that, but you'll trust him. That's really what Jesus wants. He wants us to trust his leading like the shepherd and we're sheep. And we don't know where to go. We don't know what's safe. We don't know what's around the corner, but he does. So mm. you put yourself in his hands and you can't go wrong. Amen. Amen. Uh, and I, I just, I go ahead. Go ahead, Brother Taylor. Okay. I, I just wanted to share something. Uh, well, first of all, you know, for the for the most part, if the Holy Spirit is the one leading you, it has to be consistent with what the Bible says, right? Amen. It has to be consistent. The second thing is, if you, he I wouldn't say hear a voice. I, I would say like if you if you get a conviction about something, if it's from the Holy Spirit, it is it's clear, mm -hmm. it is clear. And I've had this, right. I've had this a lot of times. You know this this this. Um, this channel, this YouTube channel, School for Prophets, I, I didn't think of that name. I didn't think of the name School for Prophets. It just popped up. It was, a, it was a conviction that I had. And I didn't even know what a School for Prophets was, you know. I was, um, I, I think I was uh, painting at the time. I was painting and then I get this thought, hey, you're going to start a School for Prophets. And I said, well, how am I going to start a School for Prophets? I don't have the money to, to build a school. I don't have teachers. I don't have none of these things, right? And I didn't know what a School for Prophets was. And so, I the next day it was Sabbath. I went to to church. I asked my elder, one of the elders. I said, "Hey, do you what, what's a school for prophets?" And then he said, "Oh, it's just a bunch of you know in the in the Old Testament, a bunch of guys reading scripture, you know, doing Bible studies." And I was already doing that. Um, I was already doing that online with you guys. You know, I was already doing that. Uh, this was the first year of the YouTube ministry. I was already doing that and. You know that that told me okay then we should call this you know this this channel school for prophets and so w when i believe when when the holy spirit talks to you or convicts you it's clear it's clear mm -hmm. it's clear but the the number one the number one thing is it has to be consistent with what the bible says if it's Amen. not consistent it's not the holy spirit mm -hmm. so that, that's all that's all i was going to say and our next i'm sorry go ahead N you were going to say something? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Just basically that, you know, we can't trust, you know, like Mormons, for example, nothing against our Mormon brothers and sisters, but they'll give you Bible studies and right away they'll tell you, oh, you got to feel, uh, ask for this burning in your bosom that, that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And, and it's true that the Holy Spirit can work with us in that way, but in most cases, um, it's through the knowledge of the scripture as how we're going to have a knowledge of, of right and wrong. That's why in 2 Timothy 3.16, it tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. Mm -hmm. So well, more so, th go ahead. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, and basically more so than a feeling, more so than an emotion mm -hmm. or, or a gut feeling, we have to have the word of God in, mm -hmm. our, in our minds and our hearts. And Christy, I hope that answers the question for you and your husband. But the point of knowing what the scriptures say is not only to be able to, you know, recite, you know, chapter and verse. It's about knowing his character, you see. Amen. And so yeah. when you know his character, then, you know, so you look at your husband next to you and you'll know if something's coming from him <laughs> or not. You, you know what I'm saying? That's the way it is from God, too. Yeah. And read Psalms 23, 3, it says, He restored my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He wants us to reflect his character, and he's the one leading us, and that's what's going to happen. As long as the Lord is our shepherd, that's going to happen. Amen. Thank you, okay. Christine. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the... Actually, just to add on to what Tiller was talking about in regards to an impression, because I feel the need, the Lord is leading me to say this, the um 
in regards to knowing God's voice, I believe God orchestrated all of this. And, and just a small quick testimony is I was designing a webinar for a whole nother ministry. And, and it was two o'clock in the morning. And the Holy Spirit just said to me, tell Tilla the same thing that you're doing for this ministry to, for him to do it for his, for, you know, this ministry for school for profits ministry. And this is how this whole entire webinar <laughs> had began. So you'll know when the Lord is for me, I, I knew because there's just no way I'm just sitting there and the, the thought just randomly came out of nowhere. Yeah. So I could definitely relate to what, what Tilla, what Tilla is saying. Uh, we got the next person is Anna Rodriguez. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. Hi, Anna. Um, my question is, oh, I'm from uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, uh, my question is, is I have three boys, uh, 12, 10, and four. Um, I feel like God's been leading me to talk to them more about everything that's been going on, the time that we're living in, and um, just to prepare them, whether it be whether God comes now, today, tomorrow, next year, 10 years, whatever it be. Um, but what would you say that you guys would, how are you guys guiding your children, your young ones into this? Because in it, I don't want to keep in a way feeding them formula um, when we're in such a time as this, where mm. especially for my 12 and 10 year old who the world is really trying to any way take them. And I'm seeing that. Um, but what would you say and how would you guide them? Like what were different, either whether it be movies, YouTube, or um, we have been reading the Bible in worship, but it's just that part to guide them into this, especially in a time that we are in today. Mm. What a question. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know this, and I, I, cause I know this is your concern. I have children too, that the world is coming after our kids, isn't it? Yes. They literally um, even said that. I mean, there was that video that came out a few days ago with yeah. the gay choir from San Francisco. And they openly said that that was the theme of it. We're coming after your children. Yes. So the world ain't playing around. I well, think uh, uh, from my yeah. children real quick, sorry, Pastor Sixto. We're just no, no, quick. no, please. For my children, I try to teach them biblical principles. And in this case, I'm trying to teach them to guard the avenues of the soul. So mm -hmm. guard what they watch, what they hear and things like that, because everything has an influence on them. So like, for example, you know, my kids are around that same age. Uh, my eldest is 11. And so they know already, even the little one knows, like if we put like Netflix on or something, they already know what they shouldn't be watching. You, you know what I mean? Everything has to be daddy or mommy approved. And so they're already, they're already learning how to discern. So how do you go about doing that? Well, we have other things. We have uh, a couple of different other channels on, we have a Roku box. So we have different channels um, that you can get uh, um, clean entertainment, you know, for children, of, especially of that age. But I think it's, it's for us, the priority has been not only to because we don't want to restrict them either, because you know how that is. When you restrict them, that's what they're drawn to. So what we're trying to do is teach them, you know, how to know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And that I get from, you know, from the priests in the Old Testament, where God said, teach them the difference between the holy and the unholy, the clean and the clean. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately that's what, uh, what, what children, what, what we're doing with our children. So I don't know if that helps. You know, I, I agree with Johnny. One of the things that I remember. Uh, I think, was her name Sandra? I don't remember now. Anna. Forgive me. Anna, Anna is, I remember that when we were kids, what? No, 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 go ahead. I remember that when we were kids, I'm 46 now. I remember that when we were kids, my dad would take us and have worship with us, right? Just like in the, the, the sanctuary service, if you studied the sanctuary, they had the sacrifice two times a day. Um, and we had two times a day as well. And in that time, um, my dad would open up the scriptures to us, read to us, and he would do something very important. He just wouldn't read to us. He'd make it, he'd make it so that I would understand. He would put mm -hmm. it into a practical situation, a practical day, a regular thing of life. And this is what, you know, and he made it practical for me. And he gave me an atmosphere where if I had a question, I can openly say, pops, I just don't understand. 
I, I just don't understand. You got to help me understand. And my dad yeah. would patiently and and lovingly guide me and lead me. But he created that atmosphere for us. And I'm 46 years old now. My oldest daughter is 20, is going to be 22. My oldest son is going to be 11. My youngest daughter is eight. And let me tell you something. I don't, I don't believe that they're faking it for me. When it's time for worship, we have worship. We sing, we laugh, we go over scripture. I'm asking them if they understand. I make it, I make sure that they understand the practicality of what of what we're what we're studying. I want them to see that this is there's here the here's what God is saying. This is what the devil is wants us to be. Uh, this is what God is protecting us from. This is what the devil is trying to lead us to. And so I make it open to them to the point where if my son, which is the 11 year old, has a question, he's open. And he can trust me and he'll be like, Pops, I, you know, I, you I don't understand. What does that mean? And yeah. we openly share the scripture. And we do this twice a day. Once in the morning, first thing in the morning, because the devil don't sleep. Right in the morning, he, he don't wake up late. He's up, he's up before us and he's ready to attack. And first thing in the morning, we want to have our, our children consecrated to God. And we want the children's blessing on them. And I want them to understand things. And, and in the evening, uh, we have another time of just sharing. And they're not long, sister. My son is 11. My daughter is eight, maybe five, 10 minutes. But they'll tell you, they'll tell you that we get we get to the nitty gritty in those five and 10 minutes and they understand. Amen. And we don't move on until they until they do. And so yeah. what you're doing is correct. Don't let go of the family worship. It will continue that family worship, create an atmosphere where they want to ask questions, where they're going to want to continue to seek for your wisdom. Yeah. As long as you're connected to Christ, you will lead them straight into the kingdom of heaven by God's grace. Yeah, that's their safe haven. As, yeah. Oh, make your home, make your home the safe haven. Exactly right. Okay. So, so for me, um, I have two kids, I have a daughter who's not, who's nine years old or 10 years old now, or going to be 10. And I have a 15 month old and I'm telling you, <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's very interesting how, how, kids minds work because every every little thing i do even the, even the jokes that i make they 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 follow you know my 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 older um kid my my daughter she she like cuz i'm pretty goofy at home my her her sense of humor comes from me and so and my son too my son like if i'm running he runs if i walk he walks if i jump he jumps and so i think <laughs> i think setting an example and we have to be intentional you know what i mean we have to be intentional with everything that we do because they're looking you know they're, they're looking at this and if they see if they see that we're not serious we're not serious about about studying scripture about about praying and things like that they're gonna they're gonna see that you know they're gonna see that they're gonna think that that's a weak point and then they're gonna say well he's not serious about this so i'm not gonna do it you know what i mean and so we have to be very intentional with what we do, especially like the scheduling, how we schedule our days too. Um, we're we're try in in my household right now. We're trying to we're trying to schedule our, our days so that we have um, you know early worship time, and then also um, before bed you know worship time. We we pray daily. We pray daily. So I think that's also you know being intentional, setting an example is so important. And then and then also also. Mm -hmm. For me, very important, constant prayer, constant mm. prayer. Mm. There's so many times where my where I think like my daughter is, oh man, I don't know, you know. But but constant prayer, constant prayer. God will, you know, God will prove to you that He's there. Constant prayer. Mm. So, you know, I just want to add real quickly, Brad, before we move on to the next question. If you remember when when they looked at Jesus, and they were like. This Jesus, this guy is different. He speaks with authority. You remember that, that that part of scripture? Well, what did they see in Jesus? Well, they not only saw a man that was speaking with the power of the Holy Spirit, but he was also living with the power of the Holy Spirit. He had that authority because what he preached, he lived. And so that can be our experience, Anna. That can be my experience. That could be your experience. That could be all of our experience if we do it the right way with Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks for that awesome question, Anna. Absolutely, have, thank you. We have about five minutes left, so maybe we could sneak in maybe <laughs> one or two more questions. Diana? Hi, um, I'm from Texas. I had, it's a quick question. Um, so 
earlier, one of the ladies here was talking about how some people can have uh, trouble experiencing joy because maybe they haven't found their mission here. So can it also be the same if maybe someone is doing everything that uh, is uh, required of them? Like, basically, like, maybe they're helping others, doing charity, praying all the time. Um, like, they're connected to God, but could it be that because they're not keeping the Sabbath, they're not experiencing joy? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, or I are they not that, keeping the Sabbath because they don't know? Go ahead, yeah, they, it makes a difference if, if you know better. I mean, what does the Bible say? That mm -hmm. him that knows to do good and doeth not to him it is sin. But in the times of our ignorance, God winks at is what it says in, in Acts. So it depends. You know, it depends on whether or not a person knows that they should be doing something and they're not doing it. Then you're really not following his guidance, right? What, what do you What do you guys think about that? Well, of course. I mean, check your motives. Um, Tilla read from from Matthew chapter seven. Those that will say, "Lord, Lord," God said, "I never knew you," and so we definitely yeah. have to check our motives. We definitely have to check our hearts. Um, of course, uh, the Bible also talks about busy here, busy there, um, yeah. and so we definitely have to to check ourselves too. We got to check our motives. We got to check, you know, how we're how we're doing spiritually how's our bible study how's our prayer life how are we connecting with christ on a daily basis this is not often not just here and there not just on and off i mean but on a daily basis right the, the apostle says i die daily on a daily basis how is our connection with jesus yeah. that's what we have to see okay uh was that helpful Rick i don't know if that was <laughs> So sorry. Okay. So so can we can we frame the question again? What was what was the the question? Like summarize the question. I think she was saying that if someone is is really busy, but doesn't have any joy, right? What what was the problem? I, I, that's what I kind of understood. That that's why that's why I was answering the way I was. Am, am I right? I don't know. About having uh, a full sense of so joy. what I was. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Diana. No, no, go ahead. Sister. Okay. <laughs> I was just saying, like, can it be that someone is maybe uh, like praying all the time? The person prays all the time. They do charitable acts. They do, you know, everything that the Bible says we should do as good Christians. Um, could it be that that person is doing all of that? And because they're not keeping the Sabbath, they're not experiencing any joy. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, the, the, the question is what we said in the beginning. Do, do they know that the Sabbath should be kept holy or not? Um, if they yeah. know and they're not keeping it, then, yeah, that's 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 yeah. huge. Yeah. That's remember, not little. Remember in James 14, 4, 17, it says, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if this individual has not been convicted through uh, through the Bible, that keeping the Sabbath is what they're supposed to be doing then I believe that the Lord looks at all those works mm -hmm. and whatnot, and, and, you know, he, he will accept them as an offering. But if this individual has been presented the Sabbath via the scripture and they rejected it, now that's where it may fall into a false sense of joy. And if he doesn't, and if he or she doesn't know about the Sabbath and they're doing all these things and still doesn't experience joy, then, then she has to, then she's really not connecting. She has to check why, why am I doing these things? Am I doing them to be saved or am I doing them because Jesus gives me salvation, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love Christ, you will do these things. And, 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 and they're not burdensome, right? The Bible says you'll keep my commandments and they're not burdensome. The things that Jesus gives us to do are not burdensome. But if you feel burdened, if you don't feel that joy, then you need to you need to spend time at maybe fasting, maybe praying, reconnecting in a very real way and check your motives, check your motives. Yeah, I also wanted to say something real quick. Um, God judges us for the light that we're given. Mm. And I give this example all the time. Um, uh, you know, if if I if if there's in my fridge, if there is a, a sandwich for me, but I didn't put my name on it and, and one of my you know, kids go go into the into the fridge and eat that sandwich. I'm not going to punish them for that because they didn't know, right? But if I if I specifically told them and convicted them, hey, 
this is for me. I'm writing my name on this. Don't eat this. And then they they go in there eating that sandwich, knowing that they they're gonna they're gonna be fun, punished for it. You know what I mean? Like knowing that that's my sandwich, then of course they're gonna they're gonna be punished for it. So we're only we're judged for the light that uh, the light that we're given. So. Yeah. Okay. Here we have our last question, and then we can close in prayer. Uh, Stephanie. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Where good, are you from? good. Buffalo, New York. All right. Welcome. Oh. welcome. Thank you. The Thanks. last um, question. So make yeah, it last good one. one. So it's a good one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can all agree. You know, you guys touched on this. We're living in some troubling times. Um, and as a mom, it breaks my heart, you know, to see even our children being troubled, you know, really younger and younger. Um, but if you guys could give one piece of advice on how to keep our joy, not only just keep it, but also maybe to share it with our friends and our family, what would it be? Mm. Mm. Just to not only keep the joy, but to share it, you know, with, with people who are being yeah. troubled. I'll tell you what, I'll answer that real quickly and then they, these guys can answer it because I could be long winded, but not this time because yes. I'll tell you exactly what brings me joy. Okay? okay. John chapter three, verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This verse always takes my mind back to the cross. When I am at the cross, right, I'm humbled. I, I, I repent. But I'm also joyful because if it wasn't for that cross, I wouldn't have the opportunity to enjoy what I'm enjoying now in Jesus. Right. right. It wouldn't be there. And and, it, you know, when you when you when you start looking at the cross, uh, the joy comes back. Love comes back. Gratitude comes back. A sense of purpose comes back. Uh, uh, my life begins to, to to get refocused once again. because this life can give you in, in, in you know, curveballs in and out. It's, it's crazy sometimes. But the cross at least for me, centers my relationship with Christ again. And it brings me sorrow at first, but repentance again. And then I'm joyful and, and back to focus on my purpose and our mission with a grateful heart and in love with Jesus again. Amen. Well, for me, I, I was just thinking that um, considering the fact that he went to the cross at all and he extended his love to a man like me and um like us. i don't understand why he would do that because i was you know when, when i was basically living it up in the world um i don't consider myself to be somebody who was worth saving you, you know what i mean right. and so uh, i was selfish i was just doing whatever i wanted to do i was hurting people i was just living a different lifestyle and, and to know that he loved me that much um, was, was something that changed my heart. And so I can't help but share that with other people to let people know that there's a God in heaven who's real. He loves you. He's reaching out to you. And, I, and, and, and this is something that I don't know if this might be helpful for you, but this is a promise that I made to God as a response to his loving kindness that he's shown towards me is that Jesus said that there's, you know, if these don't speak out, then the rocks will speak out, right? You've, you've seen that verse. Mm -hmm. And I promised the Lord a long time ago, years ago, I said, no rock will ever speak for me, Lord. No rock mm -hmm. will ever speak for me. Mm -hmm. I will, will praise your name and I will go wherever you tell me to go. And I will say, and I will speak to whoever you want me to say. And you know what? The more I, I follow his lead, the more joyful that my, my life is filled with. And so yeah. just following him because he knows better. He knows what we need. He know, he puts us in situations that, 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 um, that he knows are going to fulfill our joy. And, and so, yeah, I would just say, just make the decision that, you know what, I'm going to share him no matter what he will figure out everything else. You know, right. he, he's not calling the prepared. He's preparing the called. And so he'll, he'll put you in the right situation. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thanks. Uh, I yeah, I would say basically let, let your joy of you being an, a born again uh, individual in Christ and share that. Let that, let that beauty of having Christ dwelling in you mm -hmm. reflect 
because I know there's a lot of people who see what's going on in the world right now and they recognize that something's about to happen, something's about to give, but they don't have that peace because mm -hmm. they're not centered in Christ. So let it be known that, yeah, we know that things are going to get worse, but like, you know, that peace in the storm, we have that blessed assurance that we're walking in Christ and our, our redemption draweth nigh. So yeah, I'll let, let Christ in you and through you be that joy that you reflect to others Amen. by God's grace. Amen. I know that this might sound weird. <laughs> this might sound weird, but my joy, my greatest joy, my greatest joy is when God corrects me. That's my greatest joy. And I know it sounds weird, but my greatest joy is when, when, when God corrects me, because then I know, then I know that he's working with me. You know what I mean? Like, then I know, Amen. okay, I'm doing something wrong and God is doing something about it because he loves me. You see what I mean? Amen. And Amen. I share this with people. I share this with people. I, I share this with, with people all the time, especially, you know, during, uh, yeah, I've been married for two years, almost three years now. And all the time, God is correcting me in my marriage. <laughs> all the time, God is correcting me in my marriage. And, you know, it's, to be honest, it's sweet. It's sweet. It's a sweet feeling because it's like, okay, God is working with me and God is, is teaching me how to really be a leader in my household. You know, and that to me, that's, that brings me the, great, you know, the greatest joy to, to, to really know that he is there working with me and he is there correcting me because he loves me. He wants me to be up there, you know. It could only mean, you know what I mean? Like, it could only mean one thing, and that is that he, he's correcting me because he wants to see me up there. That's, that's my joy. That's my joy. Amen. He chastens those he loveth, right? Amen. Amen. That's right. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the awesome question. Okay, guys. We're coming to a close. Um... I don't know who would love to close in, close in prayer right now. Um, that's I don't want this, this video to end. <laughs> real, real quick, I want to give thanks that we got Pastor Sixto back in the oh, house. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for your prayers. That that trip was long. Yeah, we missed him for about a month. He was down in Panama with oh, his yeah. uh, in-laws. Yeah. Oh, you, you went somewhere? Yeah, I went to... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's joking. He knows. Get it, bro. I missed you, bro. <laughs> no, I missed you guys too. I miss I missed you guys. I miss I missed everybody. I, I was ready to be back. I had a good time. Um, but we had we had a calling to do out there too as well with the family and, and my wife. Um to keep them in prayer. She was Bible studying, getting them ready for Christ's soon return. I believe some are even ready for baptism. Mm -hmm. And so just keep keep my family and Panama in prayer. But yes, that praise God, we came back safely. It was a hassle on the way back. My in-laws couldn't come. This was in the, the, the visa was forgotten. It was a mess. So I got to pick them up tomorrow. Praise God. Mm. But we had a good trip. And thank you for your prayers. Yeah. So this is the first time the the, the core four of Elijah 3.0 have been back together. So, yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's been fun. It was fun. It was it was good to be back. Good to be back home. All right. So let's not make Brad mad. Man. I was going to pray. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Johnny, would oh, you like to pray? Brother Brad, you got to tell these dudes because they are long-winded. So <laughs> it's all good, man. I'm telling you, every, everybody here is blessed. If you bless it, y'all bless in the comment. Amen. Bless, yeah, we bless Amen. you, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be honored to pray, Taylor. Thank you. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we've been able to spend together uh, mm -hmm. Not just the, the team here and to meet Brad, but I am so overjoyed, Lord, with with all the people that were with us and, and listening and the great questions. Oh, Lord, it is so evident that you are working in your people, that you are preparing mm -hmm. us for that trip home when you come in the sky and that marvelous day and you're going to take us all home. And so, Lord, we can't wait for that day. But in the meantime, we ask you that you give us the strength, Lord, that you give us the wisdom, the words, the know-how to be able to reach out to our family members, to our co-workers, to others, so that we could lift you up. And we know that when you're lifted up, you will draw all people to yourself because you're wonderful and you're beautiful and you're just, you're just awesome. You're our God. And so we praise you, Lord. We thank you for, for everything that you have done for us. And I want to pray especially now for the rest of the week, Lord. We got a, a whole week of, 
uh, of this type of interaction lined up, bless the School for Profits uh, team that's putting it together. Mm -hmm. And we ask you also for our ministry, the Elijah 3.0 ministry as well, Lord. And we put all of our plans in, in, your, in your hands, Lord. We thank you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, guys. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to Elijah 3.0. Amen. Links are Amen. in the description box. <laughs> and make sure you're still subscribed if you already subscribed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, right. please. Okay, we're, we're, we have come now to the conclusion of this powerful, powerful message. If you, you guys that are here or you guys that are not aware, haven't seen the schedule, tomorrow we will continue at the same time, 7.30 Eastern, where Brother Darius from Following Christ 77 on YouTube. He will be speaking about heart work. I will also be joining him. So you guys look out for that. Uh, again, thank you guys uh, for for this this great message, man. I've been blessed. A lot of people here have been blessed. Tilla, thank you for hosting all of this. Uh, we hope you guys have a good night's rest and, and be ready for the next day. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. God bless. Hey, have a good night, everybody. God bless.